Hello everybody, back 15 minutes. I hope you guys are ready for another session. Hopefully we'll be, we'll be finished before 10 o'clock this morning. Are you with me? One, two, three. Okay, good. Right, so now the third topic that we're going to talk to, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to talk to you about is the link between insurance and investments. Now investments is an extremely integral part of every person's life. Investment is the one thing, as boring as in insurance is, as exciting is investments. And I hope that you can take something from this now that will show you that even with a small amount of money that you put away every month, invest, you can retire or in a couple of years have enough money to live off the returns of your investments. Now if we get back to, to, back to our PowerPoint, back to the screen, the link between insurance and investments is this one little thing called retirement annuities. Now re a retirement annuity is an extremely interesting thing. It, it, it's basically a savings account. Retirement annuities is not pension funds. Okay, now if, you're a, uh, if you have a job and you work, your employer will most probably pay you some form of pension, which means it will contribute to a, a, a central pension fund. If you work for the government, the, gov the government employees uh, pays pension to the, to the government employee uh, pension fund. And when you retire one day, they will pay you out everything that you've, that you've saved. Now, there's, there's certain laws regarding this. There's legislation that governs the, the, pe the pension funds. But... Retirement annuities is the same, or is similar, but, but not exactly the same. A retirement annuity also has this specific rules. It has the rules of, of a pension fund in this, that you have to contribute to your retirement annuity every month. You, t you go to a, uh, an asset management uh, place, like for example, Old Mutual, and you and I ha have the right even if you only have like a hundred rand a month to save, you can go to Old Mutual or Liberty Life or Momentum or Investec or any of those uh, investment houses and you can give them your money as part of a retirement annuity. And then when you retire, retirement annuity, when you retire at age 65 or age 60 or age 55, I think 55 is the minimum, if you retire at at 55 years of age, then all the money that you saved, plus the interest that you, that you earned on that, or the returns that you earned on that, um, that, will be paid out to you. Now, there's, there's certain rules regarding this. For example, they will only pay out one-third of the money as a lump sum, like a big amount, and one-third of everything you have, and the rest will be reinvested, and then you'll get your monthly salary as you were used to when you, when you worked when you retire but a retirement annuity is also like insurance it's also like life insurance so you have these two things you have a retirement annuity which is an investment because you put in, put in money into that every month but it's also an insurance like life insurance because when you die let's say you die at age 40 a ter terrible accident happened wh whatever disease you get sick or something, then that money will still be paid out to your family and friends. Or, or you could, could you remember that word? What was that word? Who's the, what do we call the people that will receive the money? It's called beneficiaries, yes? So, to your beneficiaries. So retirement annuities is the link between insurance and investments. Now, I will urge anybody that earns a pension fund to take out the retirement annuity as well. Because saving money is always a good thing. So, we have done insurance, insurance in the real world. We've talked about the link between insurance and investments. And now we are going into investments. The definition of investment says it refers to the use of money to generate wealth and income. This means that you can increase your money without any labor or 
effort. Business of it, it, it investment generates a passive income. Passive means your money will grow even if you don't touch it, even if you don't do anything. Um, many businesses invest their money in surplus funds. Now, when it comes to investments, the next thing that we have to uh, focus on is risk. Because as we spoke about in insurance, when you take out insurance, there's always risk involved. But when you invest money, it is exactly the same thing. There's always risk involved. Now, the, you, it works usually, it works like this. The more, the higher the risk, the greater is the reward. And the lower the risk, the, the less the reward. The simplest thing that I can explain it to you is in a savings account. Now this, every, anybody who's anybody can go to APSA or to NetBank or to uh, Standard Bank or to F&B or to Capitec, any bank, you can go today. If you have 50 Rand in your pocket, you can go today to a bank and you can start the basic form of investment which is called the savings account. A savings account is the safest way of investing money. It basically works like this. You go to the bank, you open a savings account, you commit yourself to putting money in, into that account and you earn a simple, or sorry, the word is not simple, you'll earn compound interest on it but you'll earn a small amount of interest on it. Usually today, four and a half, five percent on your on your money. Basically, what it means is if I invest my money today, um, 100 rand, at five percent over one year, at the end of the year, simple interest, I will have 105 rand. I would have earned five rand without lifting a finger. That's a word that we call passive income. Okay, as I said, it is a low risk investment. Simple interest, as you can see our next bullet there, simple interest is a term which means that I, receive, I earn interest on money that I put away simply. There's no, there's no composition period. We have a, um, a formula there which says the interest that I earn in a, in a year is the principal amount, my 100 rand that I put away, times my interest, which is 5%, um, my interest rate times the number of years, which is 1, which then will give me 5 rand that I've earned without doing anything. However, when we get to compound interest, and this is the way that most uh, uh, businesses or most banks do things, or actually all banks do things, is they compound the interest uh, monthly, which means um, they take the, t the total amount is equal to the principal amount, let's say by 100 rand that I put in, times 1 plus my conversion period, I'll explain that to you in a moment, my total number uh, uh, to the power of the total number of conversion periods, in this case it will be 12, um, and that will give me a bit more than 105 rand. I don't want to bore you with that for the moment. Um, all I would like to, to mention or to say is that uh, you have to uh, you have to know this, these formulas. The next thing which is very very important is if you have mathematics or mathematical literacy these formulas will not be foreign to you because simple interest and compound interest is a subject or a topic that is discussed at in mathematics extensively. In business studies, you have to take your calculator along. And they are going to give you these calculations. It is important that you use the formula that you are comfortable with. I always teach my children, I don't want to confuse you. I will show you how this works, I will give you the formula, but if you are comfortable uh, working out compound interest, the way that your mathematics teacher have taught you, I'm comfortable with it as well because you will get to the same answer. There's no question about that. Okay? Right. The next one. The next investment 
is in shares. Now, I can keep you busy with shares for hours and hours and hours. But basically what shares is, is you as an individual buy, or you as a company, buy a share of another company. There's many, many principles involved, which, are, which I will explain in a second. But the basis of this is, when you buy shares in a business, you own a part of the business. It's yours. You don't owe the business anything. They don't owe you anything. You gave them your money. They gave you something that we call a share certificate. You can see it over here. And they say that you have bought a number of shares in this specific business. Now, some people buy large numbers of shares. Some people buy a small number of shares. And obviously, the bigger share percentage that you have, the more say you will have in the company. Many people believe that if they, will, they would only want to invest a small percentage of their shares in a business. And they don't want any say in the business because they don't have the financial know-how to run the business. So they'll, but they will share in the rewards, in the earnings of the business. I hope, I hope that, that, that kind of excites you because this means that this can also be a passive income. This share um, concept is, is a very old concept. Um, since business started in America um, um, in the 1800s, uh, they did it like they, they did it like this, but these days companies are very clever when it comes to shares. For example, they will give their employees the chance to buy shares in their company. Now, this th this makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because if I work for a company like, for example, Telcom or Escom, and I work very hard in it. And at the end of the year, I, they, they pay me my bonus. And I know, but they want me, they will allow me to buy some shares. I would want to buy shares in the business that I work for. Because the harder I work, the more shares I will have. Or the, the more um, income my business will have, the business that I work for. So I'm working for the business, but I'm also part owner of the business. It's a great motivation, and it works, it works really well in companies. And that's how wealth, obviously, is, is shared. Um, just, to, just to explain the basis of this um, to you, when it comes to shares, I hope you guys remember a bit of accounting. I'm just going to try to try to explain this to you. When we talk about a share, a, a, a business that has many shares, as, you, as the picture explained to you before, in year one, this business will try to do whatever it does. Let's say, for example, we buy and sell cars. I would have sales of cars, let's say a million rand, and uh, my cost of sales will be, could you remember the counting? I hope you can remember the counting. The cost of sales will be, let's say, 600,000 rand. I'll make a gross profit of 400,000 rand. By the way, you don't have to learn this. I just want to show you something. And then all my other expenses, let's say, add up to 150,000 Rand. Um, and I make a profit of uh, 250,000 Rand at the end of year one. Are you guys still with me? Now, this 250,000 Rand profit, the Owners of the company, by the way, if you sh own shares in the company, you're part of the owner and you will have a vote. Depend your vote will be as big as how many shares you own. You will, they will say, okay, I will take this 250,000 Rand and I will put it, I will, I will split it 50-50 in two. 50%, 125,000 Rand will go to dividends. And the other 125,000 Rand 
will be capitalized. Okay, are you guys with me? It will be capitalized. Now, if you earn, if the business, the total value of the business is 10 million rand, let's just take a number, the percentage of the shares, of the profits, depending on how many shares you have over here, depending on how many shares you have over here, how many shares you've bought, that is the percentage of this money, that 50%, that will be paid out into your pocket at the end of the year. Are you guys still with me? The rest will be capitalized and my business will grow. My business was worth 10 million rand. It is now worth 10 million 125,000 rand. You see? That is how profits are capitalized. Now, this decision of how much gets capitalized and how much gets paid into dividends, that's up to the board of directors to decide. All I would like to explain to you is that shares has a, spe has a specific risk involved in it. If it goes well into, in a business and the business makes a lot of profit, then the shareholders, you, you that buy the share in the profit, uh, share in the business, you will share in the profits of the business. And you will get paid dividends, but your share price will also grow. You also have more, whatever you bought your share for. If you bought your share for 10 Rand each, my share will now be worth 10 Rand and 12 cents in this instance. Uh, I, hope, I hope that's, that's, that's clear, um, that, that, makes, that makes sense uh, to you. Because you get like a double, um, uh, uh, double investment or a double return on your investment. Your share, your share price, whatever you bought it for, that grows, but also you get paid dividends if, if, if the ratio here obviously is 50, 50. I hope that makes sense to you. you this is not something that you're going to be quizzed on, but that, that, this is how uh, the, the uh, real life investments work. Um, the risk, obviously, is also what if my profits, was, what if my expenses was more? What if I made a 200,000, 250,000 loss, just for example? If I made a loss, then you, then this whole, I would, there would obviously not be dividends, and all of um, the money would be deducted from the total value of my company. My company will be um, valued less, and my shares that I bought will be less. My shares will only be, let's say, worth nine, nine rand seventy-five if I bought it for ten rand. You see, that's the risk when it comes to shares and share investments. I hope this roughly makes makes sense to you. I just needed to you to understand what risk is about, because if you invest your money in a lucrative business that might make money or may may, may not make money, it is important that you that you understand what the risk is. Now, <clears throat> when it gets to shares in this, you are going to be asked. You are going to be asked uh, what is ordinary shares, and you are going to be asked what is preference shares. Again, I can explain all of this to you, but it's important that you go study it yourself. You have to, understand, you have to learn the terms. What is an ordinary share? An ordinary share is basically a share that no, has no special rights or restrictions. That is just, as I explained it now, you have an ordinary share and so forth. But then you get... Um, ordinary preference shares, cumulative, cumulative preference shares, sorry, I got it, we'll get it right, uh, non-cumulative preference shares, participating preference shares, and non-participative uh, preference shares. Basically what it means, each one of them has their own little rule. And when you, when you are asked about shares or when you get a question on shares, all I need you to do is understand what the, or know what the difference is. Within the context of our teaching today, it really doesn't make a big difference. You just need to know that shares is a high-risk investment. You, anybody can buy shares in, in companies if, they, um, if they're the right place at the right time. And if you um, buy those shares, you own part of the company. The company owes you nothing. Um, you own part of the company. And for better or for worse, <laughs> if the company does well, your shares and the dividends that you earn will do well. 
if the company does badly, <laughs> your shares and your dividends will do badly. Um, there is a great risk involved. You can see it's much different than from a savings account. We will get a low return um, every year, no matter um, what happens out there. Now, the next question that you are going to get is on the Johannesburg Securities Exchange. Now, South Africa is a great, great country. We have the largest um, securities exchange in the world. Oh, sorry, not in the world, in Africa. By far the, the largest in Africa. Um, we are the market leaders in Africa and on our continent when it comes to uh, uh, securities exchange. We, ha we have economically a very, very strong, strong country. And the JSE was set up as a formal market where all public um, companies uh, that have been listed can trade their shares. Now, this is, this is exciting, exciting things. If you can look at this picture, this is the, the, the outside of the building, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Stock Exchange and Securities Exchange, it's, it's basically the same word. Um, we don't have to get into the semantics. But if you walk into the secu uh, Securities Exchange, you will see there's all these numbers. And all of these numbers represent sh different companies and what their share prices are doing. I've explained to you what happens in, the year, in a year when it comes to profits. At the Johannesburg ex ex Securities Exchange, everything happens on a daily basis. Brokers go there and, and they represent their companies and they buy and they sell shares every single day. It is, it is a great, great um, a tool for the South African e economy. Let, let me give you some, some uh, uh, examples. The JSC uh, provides opportunity for financial institutions to invest their money. Now, all of a sudden, there's a market. There's a place where you can go to buy and sell your shares. It's, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's basically like, a, I don't want to simplify because it really isn't simple, but it's basically like going to a farmer's market. Some people sell their, their fruit, and ve fruit and vegetables there, and you go there to buy it. And, and, and the financial people just said, okay, we want to buy and sell shares. We need a vehicle. We need a, mecha a mechanism. And the mechanism is the JSC. They built this, this large building. People go there every day, and they go onto a trading floor, and they buy and they sell shares. And, and for the, the main part, uh, the biggest part, the, the biggest advantage of the Johannesburg Securities Exchange is it channels money to economically active areas. Now, that's a lot of big words. Let me just plainly explain it to you. Let's say, for example, um, they found... Uh, coal in the Northern Cape, just, just for an example. And there's a company that uh, starts mining coal. That company is going to need money to do that. And now investors and brokers have the chance to buy shares in that company, meaning you give them your money, so now they have money to, to, to dig holes in the ground to, to get the, the coal extracted. And if they make a profit on it, you share in the profit. So where there are active economic markets, that is where the money goes. Because everybody at the JSE has one simple thing in mind. They want to make as much money as possible. Meaning, they want to buy a share when it's 10 Rand, and they want to sell the share when it's 12 Rand or 13 Rand. Or they want to wait. Or they want to wait um, until the dividends get paid out. And, and, and receive uh, dividends on their money. That's, that's the basic uh, principles of the Johannesburg Securities Exchange. By the way, if you're a South African, you can feel really, really proud about uh, how we conduct our economic business through the JSC in our country. The next thing is unit trust. Now, unit trust is kind of the, the, the in-between. We talked about savings account, that is a low risk, low reward investment. And we talked about shares, which is a high risk, high reward, or high risk, low, no reward, negative reward investment. Unit trust is kind of the middleman between the two. Investment companies saw the opportunity to make money 
from a lot of people contributing to specific shares. And what they did was they, they put up a trust. Unit trust are the combined resources of thousands of investors who have entrusted their money to a management company. The management company buys shares on the JSC on behalf of the investors. You see, here the JSC comes into play. The trust does not give the shares to the investor but combines them in, a, in an investment portfolio. The management then divides the portfolio into equal units and the investor, investor receives a certain number of units for the money that he has entrusted to the management company. Now, unit trust is the simplest way to do a proper investment. Many retirement annuities, remember retirement annuities that we talked about? Many retirement annuities use unit trust to grow their funds. So you get the best of the JSE in a safe environment put together um, into trusts where lots of people, a large number of, they say literally thousands of investors, invest their money. Um, investments like, for example, uh, investment houses or companies, the management companies that we talked about, is companies like, for example, Investec, um, Liberty, um, Momentum, APSA, uh, and, and so forth. And I really want to, to urge you today. You see, this is, where, this is where this gets really practical and it gets really um, intense. You can do this. You as a grade 12 learner, and I, and I want you to hear me properly when I, when I speak today. You can do this today. You can go to an insurance company like any, any insurance company, Old Mutual or um, Liberty or Investec, wherever you decide, Momentum, wherever you decide to go. You can go and you can sit down with a broker and you can talk to him and say, listen, I want to be rich one day. I want to be wealthy. How much must I invest today? Or how much must I invest over the, the period of my lifetime just to earn some money when I retire or to buy the house that, I, that, that my family deserves or whatever your goals in life are? It's a very, very important bit because uh, it is really um, accessible to people. And, and, and these companies obviously want, uh, want an individual's business or a business is business, for that matter. It, has, it makes a lot of sense, because let me show you quickly something. I hope, I hope you can stay with me. This is the formulas that we've used previously, the, the formulas that you, that you can use, uh, that you have to use from your mathematical or mathematical literacy class. And this is the real world. This is literally how things can progress. If I take a thousand rand today and I invest it at ten percent for twelve months compounded every month for only one year, which means my the number of conversion periods is twelve, I will earn one thousand one hundred and four rand. Can you see this number over here? Very important. Just, just bear with me for a second. If I invest a uh, thousand rand for ten percent for a year, simply, not compound interest, simple interest, I only would have earned one thousand one hundred rand. You agree? Because ten percent is uh, one hundred is ten percent of a thousand. But because of compound interest, if you can, if you can have a look over there. I earn four rand more, four rand seventy one to be precise. Now you think to yourself, ah, oh, come on, Mr. Pretorius, only four rand extra, or maybe a hundred rand, and I put that money away for a year. Okay. Let me let me show you the next line. Let's say you put that thousand rand away today, and you never, ever, ever touch it for forty years. Your age what? Eighteen? 40 years, then you're 58 years old. 
you will have 53,766 53, rand. Now, just get your head around this, just for a second. You're, in one year, you've earned 10%. But in 40 years, you've earned 53 times what you originally, almost 54 times what you originally inve in, in, invested. Remember, you put this money away, you've never added anything to it, all that that money did was it grew, and it grew, and it grew. Interest, on interest, that's what compound interest means. You get interest, on interest, on interest, on interest. And you, you, you um, uh, multiplied your money 53 times. In one year, you multiplied it by 0.104 times. Like 10, just over 10%, 10.4%. But in 40 years, you, you didn't only double your money, you, you, you multiplied your money 53 times. Now, this is with a single investment of 1,000 rand, as, as I've explained. Imagine what will happen to this money if I invest 100 rand a month every single month for 40 years. Imagine where that, that, where that amount will grow to then. This is the wonder of compound interest. You have to be patient. You have to invest money, whether you invest it in shares or whether you invest it in unit trusts. These shares or unit trusts also have, an in, not an interest rate, we call it a rate of return, uh, a return on investment. When you invest your money in a savings account, they give you a fixed interest rate. We said 10% now, it's usually about 5 But if you invest your money in unit trusts, one year it will be 15%, the other year it will be 10%. Some years it will be 30 40%, depending on what the economic markets go, do. But the principle stays, if I regularly invest money, not save, remember there's a big difference between saving and investment. Investment means I want to use the return on the investment to live from not my investment itself. This means, in this greater context, in this context, my investment was a thousand rand. In 40 years' time, I can spend 52,000 rand, and I will still have my original investment. You see, there's something rich people <laughs> don't tell us. There's not a single rich person in the world that spends more money than he earns. Think about that for a moment. Because if you are a person that invests money, you will be a person who will spend the proceeds or the returns of that money, not the investment itself. And you will even put more money, part of your return, back onto that investment, so that that investment can, can return more money the next year. I hope this makes sense to you because it is an extremely uh, uh, integral part of your life one day one day you guys all i'm sure have ambitions all of you would want to go um, and 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 live a, a proper lifestyle with a proper uh, job um, one day and the moment that you receive your salary all of these principles of insurance and investment is going to apply to you I hope, I hope it's clear. I, I hope you really um, try, to, try to understand this. Because if you commit yourself to investing money every month and spending within your means, meaning don't spend more than you earn, that's a very simple concept, then you will be wealthy one day. I hope I hope this this is clear to you. I, I can tell you I can tell you so so many stories. Let me tell you one story. Um, one of my friends is a banker. He specializes in loans, and one of his friends came to um, him, and he said he wants to borrow some money. He, he said there's there's no problem, um, but you're a lawyer. He said yes, um, and my friend told him but asked him but isn't your your wife a lawyer as well? Now now get your head around this. 
it's a couple. They married a couple of years, three or four years. The, the, the man earns 60,000 rand a month, his lawyer. The, the, his wife earns 40,000 rand a month. She's also a lawyer. Between them, they earn 100,000 rand a month. Now, do you think, just, just out of off the top of my head, do you think they're rich? Uh, if you said yes, I uh, know. You're absolutely wrong. Because this person, uh, this couple, they went to my friend to borrow money. Now, how would you want to borrow money um, if, you, if you earn 100,000, between you earn 100,000 rand a year? Basically, these two people earned so much money, but both of their cars, they drove the most expensive cars that they can afford. They have to pay insurance on those cars. They, they lived in the biggest house. They rented the biggest house. And, they, and all the furniture and everything was insured. Basically, between the two, they spent 90,000 rand just on their food and, and insurance and car and house and so forth, between the two. They only had 10,000 rand a month to live from. Now, that sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But the guy, he's a golfer. He loves go pl to play golf. He buys clubs. He goes to and, um, many different... He has a hobby, um, which costs him a lot of money. And the wife, she's, she loves going to spas and eat, d dine out with, these, with her friends and so forth. So that 10,000 rand that they wouldn't want to spend in a, in a year, in a month, is just not enough. Now, you can see this is kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Now they want to borrow money so that they can still live above their means. And this is the principle that I would like to leave you with today. I know we, we, we're going to finish a bit early, but I would love to leave this principle with you today. Wealth and riches is not the same thing. A person who earns a basic salary can be wealthy because if you think wealthy you will be wealthy if you earn a lot of money that might make you that that might make you wealthy but it but but that that does not mean you're rich you can earn a lot of money and spend it poorly manage it poorly and at the end of the day you you might not even have enough because even if you earn a big big salary the you can spend it all the principle of interest, the principle of investment, whether you invest in a savings account, whether you invest in shares, whether you invest in unit trusts, it, does not, it doesn't take away from the fact that you um, will earn more money one day if you invest your money properly. And obviously that means that you, you, that you can't, can't spend it all. People say... There's not a single rich person, not a single wealthy person in this world um, who spends more than he earns. And that is the principle of, in, of investments. What do I do with the money that I don't spend? What do I do with that surplus money? If I earn 2,000 Rand a month or 5,000 Rand a month and I spend 1,500 Rand, what do I do with that 500 Rand? Do I invest it or do I spend it? A and just to go one step further, do I save it just to spend it later? You see, that's not what investment means. Investment means I spend my money. I, I spend the return on the investment, not the investment itself. I wish I could see you guys face to face. I wish I could answer some questions because I, I'm sure you have a gazillion questions that you would like to ask me. But for the moment, um, I just leave, leave you with this. Study hard, please. You're the future generation of this country. And go out and enjoy your matric exam and, all, and, and, and your life that lies ahead of you. Your future is so bright, you really have to wear shades. Thank you very, very much. Have a nice day.